First off, we have our template that we printed out onto a piece of 110 pound cardstock. Then we took a pair of scissors and carefully cut out around the outline so that it's ready to tape to our piece of steel. And that piece of steel is a 1084 high carbon. Now there are a lot of choices when it comes to knife metals, and you'll hear guys telling you to use an old lawnmower blade or a used file, but I'm going to save you a lot of grief here use a known steel and by that I mean one that you know what its material composition is. In this tutorial I'm going to use a piece of 1084 as it's easy to heat treat by yourself without a bunch of fancy equipment. You might hear it referred to as a beginner steel but it's no slouch and it will produce a very nice blade. There are a couple of sources I use for 1084. For small pieces I go to Alpha Knife Supply and Chuck is also a good source for G10 sheets that we'll talk about shortly. For longer pieces, I suggest you go to Aldo Bruno, the New Jersey Steel Baron. Aldo is a great guy to deal with, and I highly recommend both him and Chuck. You'll see their contact info on the screen. Next, we got a couple of blocks of black linen micarta, which I like using for handle scales, as it's easy to shape and is very durable. I usually get mine off of eBay from a supplier named Billiard Stuff 2012. It has a good supply of different types and colors. Then we have a piece of quarter inch brass rod that I purchased at my local Ace Hardware. You can also find it on eBay. We're going to use that as our pin material to attach and secure our handle scales. We also have the sheets of G10 in black and white that I'm going to use to make decorative liners on our handle. G10 is a really tough material that polishes up well, but you do need to take extra precaution when sanding and cutting as its airborne fibers are nasty little critters that you don't want to get into your lungs. Again, I get mine from Chuck at Alpha Knife Supply. He has a large selection of thicknesses and colors and I've got his contact info on the screen. On this knife, I'm going to use uh, 30 thousandths thickness and he's got all kinds of different uh, thicknesses, so uh, plenty to choose from. Lastly, you see a box of West Systems G-Flex 650 Epoxy, and you'll need to have that on hand before you get ready to attach your scales. I buy this locally at West Marine, but you can also order it from Amazon and other online suppliers. During this tutorial, I'll talk about the tools I use and what's needed as they arise in each step of the process. All right, let's start by taping our template to our piece of steel and then tracing our outline onto the steel with a sharpie. And I like using a waterproof sharpie with just a black sharpie because if my, my metal gets hot while I'm grinding on it, I can dip it into a bucket of water and I don't lose my outline. All right, after I've traced the majority of the outline, there's a couple areas that were blocked by the tape. So I'll remove the tape and then take my Sharpie and, and fill in those areas so that I have a complete outline. The next step in making this knife is going to be rough cutting our knife plank. For this process, I use a Harbor Freight 4x6 horizontal vertical bandsaw. You'll find this inexpensive bandsaw in many knife shops. Once I replaced the stock blade and did a few tweaks I found suggested on the internet, it works perfect for me. It also allows you to make cuts on long pieces of stock when in the horizontal position, and I've used it for many other things in the shop besides knife making. All right, here you see me getting set up to make a long cut on a piece of uh, flat bar. I uh, have to take the vertical table off, the support table off, so that you can use it in a horizontal position. And that's what I'm doing here. Take the table off and then uh, 
clamping my piece of flat bar into the vise. Another option for metal cutting is a portable type handheld bandsaw. You can use this by itself or you can upgrade it by mounting it to the swag portable table you see pictured. A question I get lots of is can I use one of these upright bandsaws I saw at my local big box store? And unfortunately the answer is no. These are designed to cut wood and run way too fast for cutting metal. I have one and it gets a lot of use just not for cutting metal. Now for those of you that are on a tight budget and don't want to buy an electric saw, there's the trusty handheld hacksaw. Get yourself a quality one as it will follow you even after you've purchased a regular bandsaw. You'll also need a large rough cut file. Notice on the one picture that I've drilled a quarter inch hole into a golf ball and inserted the file into it for a cheap and comfortable handle. To cut out your profile with a hacksaw, You'll want to start by mounting the blade blank in a vise and drilling a bunch of holes around the perimeter of the outline. Then use the hacksaw to cut from hole to hole. Once you've removed as much metal as you can this way, take your file and carefully remove what's left down to your final outline. This is a time consuming method, but it does work. All right, let's talk a little bit about safety gear. Be advised knife making is inherently dangerous, so be mindful and use safety gear to protect your eyes, ears, and lungs. Always have a fire extinguisher on hand and use any other protective gear that is suggested by the manufacturer of the tools you're using. All right, here we are at the bandsaw, and I'm using it to remove some of the metal around the perimeter of the knife. Now, you could do all of this on the grinder. You could use a belt to just grind it down to the line, but it'll save you in the cost of belts by using the bandsaw to get rid of some of this metal. And you'll notice I'm not trying to cut right on the line. I'm just getting uh, close to it and, and uh, I'm going to finish it up on the grinder to get it right down to the, to the sharpie line. What you see me doing here is using a 1-2-3 block to set my work table 90 degrees to the platen so that I get a good 90 degree corner on my blank spine and edge. Then I'm just slowly grinding around the blank down to the sharpie outline that was traced onto our metal. Let's talk about grinders for a minute. These are the heart of any knife making shop so it's probably going to be the most important purchase you'll make in knife making. I started out with a Craftsman 2x42 grinder that ran wide open all the time and while I made quite a few knives with it, it was a point of frustration. I wanted to get to a much smoother finish before I came off the grinder but trying to get a good finish with fine belts at that speed just created gouges that took forever to get out of the blade. I was forced to start hand sanding after I got to 120 grit and this just took forever, I mean forever. All that time, I just thought, man, I'm a lousy grinder, when in fact, I just needed to slow the belt down a bit. So my 2x72 variable speed grinder was a game changer for me. And if there's any way you can swing it, that is the direction I suggest you go. Knife making is like any other hobby in that it takes money to play. And a decent grinder is not a whole lot more than a good set of golf clubs and a few green fees. There are quite a few good grinders on the market that include a variable speed controller or variable frequency drive or VFD as they're called. The VFD allows you to bring in 110 or 120 volts single phase power into your controller and then it puts out 220 volts to a three phase motor that you can slow down or speed up as you need. I decided to build my grinder from a kit 
uh, the Polar Bear Forge grinder in a box, and I'm really glad I chose this route. It allowed me to um, put out cash and segments as I went along with the build, and I'm very happy with my grinder. If I were looking for a grinder today, it would probably be one of the, these three machines. The TW90 by Travis Wirtz, the Northridge Tools 2x72, or the Esteem 2x72 grinder by Brett Matthews. Other machines that would do the job pretty well would be the Little Buddy by Wilmot Grinders, uh, one of Jose Fears 2x72s, or an Oregon Blade Maker 2x72. All of which are decent little machines that would get the job done. What you see me doing now on the blade is I'm, I've got it uh, angled so that I'm just on the edge of the belt and I'm grinding in, removing metal in sort of an arc. So that, and then I'll go in uh, here in a minute and I'll take and uh, use a, the wheel on the bottom of the platen to get a real smooth edge on the bottom of the uh, rounded areas. You'll see that I occasionally dip the blank in a, in a bucket of water and that's just to cool it off because it does. It heats up really quick when you're on the grinder. Notice my setup. I'm I've got the uh, the table just below the bottom of the plate, and so I'm actually grinding on a slack belt area, and it just makes things, when you're doing rough grinding like this, it just makes it uh, a little bit smoother, especially when I'm trying to do those rounded areas. When I go to uh, to switch grits, I'll move the, the work um, platform up so that I'm grinding right on the plate, which has a, a, a glass backing, so it'll be perfectly flat and uh, 90 degrees. All right, here you see I've removed the work table, and I'm using that two-inch rubber wheel on the bottom of the plate to uh, do the rounded areas on the bottom of the handle. For time's sake, I'm not going to show it, but um, after I've completed this, uh, doing this perimeter, this profile, I'll do the same thing. I'll switch belts. So I'll go to uh, 120 grit. This uh, that you see me use now is a 60 grit, but I'll switch over to 120 grit and go around the entire perimeter and do the same thing with the, the two inch wheel on the bottom of the handle in the round areas until I get it nice and smooth. And then we might even go to a, a finer grit belt and do the same thing all the way around so that we got it really nice before we uh, uh, go to heat treat. All right, you see here I'm switching out belts. I'm putting on a new 60 grit belt. We're going to uh, use that to take the uh, surface area of both sides and grind it down, get the mill scale off of it. And we'll do that with a, a little handheld magnet, 150 pound magnet that holds the blade steady while I hold it up against the plating of the grinder. Right, that pretty much does it. We've ground both sides on the edge of our blank and we'll do that whole process again with a 120 grit belt and then a 180 grit belt until we have a nice clean smooth finish. That's as far as we're going to go in this video but please subscribe to the channel so you'll know when the next video in this series comes out. Next time I'll show you how to set up and drill your pin locations as well as how to grind your bevels and everything we need to do in preparation for heat treat. 
Thanks for watching. Please comment if you have any questions and give us a like if you want to see more of this type video.